All right, everybody, let's have a quick chat. Um, before we jump into looping, there was one extra thing I wanted to jump, uh, want, want to say before we go into making our loops, which is the next uh, section of the course. But I want to talk about what pieces of equipment that you can pair with the loop pedal. So in the previous video, I was talking about the type of loop pedals that we have, like how we have the multi-track loop pedals, like the Sheeran Looper X or the RC300, um, things like that. Um, now, the there's a couple of things that you like you immediately want to get that that if you're interested in a certain type of looping that it will save you a lot. Now, first of all, um, I only do it from the perspective of a guitarist. You can be a piano player or whatever you want to do, kind of thing with looping. Um, but I I just get a guitar with a pickup. So you see how this guitar has a pickup in it? I use a Mini Maiden. Uh, Mini Maiden EM6, and this is fantastic. It's got a really cool little AP5 original. Sounds great. Um, when I say it's a guitar, it's a guitar that can be plugged in. You can get way cheaper ones than this one um, that will work just as just fine, uh, especially for beginners. But you can use an electric guitar for looping, acoustic guitar for looping, whatever you want. Um, that's just have something that can plug into the looper is the first step. Uh, I yeah I. <laughs> I have seen one person have like a microphone and then it, go, it it was horrible. Don't ever do that. But yeah, you need a guitar that can plug in. That's the first step. Um, now, the next thing that you will want to do, because so that whatever harmony instrument that you have, so like a, 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 an instrument that could play like the chords and stuff, uh, guitar, piano, whatever it's going to be. Uh, then the next thing that people usually like to have, which I, I do, I have a microphone um, right here. Um, this is connected to my loop pedal, and this is for my beat making. So some people like to just use the guitar, and they'll um, they'll smack the guitar, and that will be their drums. But I prefer to beatbox when I'm in the studio, uh, just because I have a bit more control over the uh, the audio, and um, and it just sounds a bit cleaner for me. But any you guys can do whatever you want. There's um there's absolutely no rules when it comes to looping, but this thing is very very handy. So. The thing that you want to get with a loop pedal, uh, like when you get a microphone, um, you can either get a extra pedal that you like, you connect your microphone to, and that's going to be the microphone you sing all your songs on, and then you push the pedal, and then it will all, and then it will send the feed to your loop pedal, and then it will start recording whatever you're singing, and then you push it again, and then it stops recording, and now that's your microphone that you sing. Um, that's what Carl Walkner will, will use typically. Um, He's a really, really great looper if you haven't checked him out. He's the guy that I learned a lot from at the beginning. Um, but this one, super, super cool. Ed Sheeran used this uh, all throughout his early career, and I'm pretty sure he still uses one of them live. He has a really fancy one now. Um, but this is a Shure SM58 standard vocal microphone that you use uh, in all gigs. And what it has here, if you can look pretty clearly, I'll put it like that. You see it's got a switch. So that means it's on. That means it's off. So I turn it on when I want to do my beatboxing or sing vocal harmonies and then turn it off and bad boy is not going to be creating feedback. First mistake that I've seen people do is when they're at a gig um, or they're performing or they've got a speaker and they get an actual microphone that doesn't mute. Uh, and then as soon as they start looping, um, it starts, that microphone is picking up ambient noise and starts looping that in the loop. And then that's where you'll get like people in the crowd singing or talking, or you'll just get random noises and they'll feed back. And depending on how many times it feedbacks, it can get really, really brutal, um, and cause heaps of issues with your sound. So, um, that's a really, really big, big one to do. So make sure you get an SM. Like, this is what I use. I don't know, like, I've used other, like, friends have lent me their microphones and they were fine. Just any microphone with a switch. This one, I've been using this for, like, two years now. No problems. Ever. Fantastic. Um, uh, so, that's, that's the next big thing. Now, after that, like, so now we've got kind of control of our, our harmony like the equipment will need to create harmonies. Um, if you're going to be building bass tracks, um, that's where like you can choose what you want to do. 
if I'm in the studio, I have an octave pedal. So in the studio, I have an octave pedal. It's running. It's actually inbuilt on this Ed Sheeran Looper X. And previously, when I was using my RC300, I would use my Helix pedal, this, this bad boy over there. And that's the one that I would uh, I would set up like an octave setting and then I would get that connected and then, yeah, it would sound great. Um, and that was the bass sound that you would typically hear. When I'm gigging live, I don't use anything. I don't use any octave pedal. I don't use any audio processing. I just use the RC300. Um, it will typically, like typically if you're a gigging musician um, or you're just at home just jamming, uh, like the arrangement is the thing that's most important. The actual sound and getting like a sick bass sound and getting like those things are cool for us. Um, and that's the other thing you always got to remember. Are you doing it for you or are you doing it for everyone else? Um, for everyone else, like even, like having a, an octave pedal can actually be quite challenging to, to mix in different rooms. So I typically, if I'm jamming uh, at a gig, I will not even use a, a vocal mic for beatboxing. Um, I will not use an octave pedal. I use absolutely nothing except my guitar. So when I'm gigging at a pub or anything like that, it's just my guitar. So my guitar will be doing the... And then a good... So simple, right? And then I can do a B. And that is pretty much all I need. Um, I can kind of tweak the EQ um, to make it like the the hit on the guitar sounds a bit more punchy, but really that's all I ever use. So I'm only giving you my experience. Um, I use an octave pedal at gigs. It didn't really make a difference. Um, people only cared about the arrangement and obviously they only wanted me to play bangers um, and they want to sing along. Uh, so anything that you do, that usually is like, if you're serving really, really great, like trying to get really good audio, it's 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 so, such a personal preference. You can do whatever you like. Um, I've seen people who absolutely slay. They use all the fancy pedals. And then I have have had rooms of hundreds of people and they're all singing and I am doing nothing. Um, and I've watched Ed Sheeran do it in front of 50,000 people. And it is just bang, smack. And then he just goes and sings his song. He literally doesn't do anything more than that on some songs. It was Dive that I heard him sing it. And it was just like, boom. And then just laid that loop down. And then he just went in and fucking cranked it. And it was so good. So good. Um, that's how simple it can be. But if you're looking at things that you want to buy to pair up with a loop pedal that are really great, an octave pedal is super, super Super useful if you're trying to get really great bass tones or really great like smacks on your guitar. Like you want to get those kick kick sounds. Like, um, you can even run the octave pedal while you're doing that and you'll get a really good kick hit. Um, so that was a really cool trick that I that Dylan, one of our followers, um, absolute legend, uh, who helped get this Ed Sheeran Looper X for us. I, I say he's one of our followers, but he's just like, a great friend now at this point. He's just like, I always call him. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, bass. That's all you need to do. Get an octave pedal. Have a good time. Now, uh, that is pretty much the essentials that I would tackle when it comes to loop pedals. Obviously, you need guitar leads to connect to different things. Um, if you need to connect to uh, your computer, you'll need like fancy equipment like audio, digital audio workstations and audio interfaces to plug in. Um, but... Some of these things have just got headphones. So if you can see on the RC, on this Looper X, it has a headphone output. Um, you can just plug in your headphones and loop with your headphones if you're practicing at home. But uh, those are pretty much the things that you're gonna need that are gonna be extra. So outside of that, uh, I, I personally don't go further than that. Uh, you guys can do whatever you want. Um, seriously, no rules. Uh, but from this point, we're just going to be focusing on how can we build consistency? How can we get clean loops? How can we be more musical about it? So um, I shall see you once and we're going to start making some looping and let's see how y'all go. All 
All right. See you guys in the next video.